What's up guys, my name's Brandon and this is the new M4 iMac and in this video we're going to unbox it, set it up, run through some benchmark testing and also give you my overall first impressions coming from a longtime M1 and M3 iMac users perspective. Okay so this year I decided to go with the base model 2 port silver iMac. So this is gonna be the $1,299 model, whereas I usually go for the mid-tier $1,499 model, which has four Thunderbolt 4 ports this year. But this one will have to do because I found that I didn't even use all of those ports previously. So let's go ahead and get to the unboxing. So right up top, we have the longest pull tab on any Apple product. And now is when you would likely notice the color matching braided handle right here. So this is color coordinated based on the color of your iMac. So gotta love those details from Apple. And when you're unboxing your iMac, you wanna make sure that the side that has the screen on it is facing upwards. You don't wanna open it the wrong way and have your iMac fall out. And then inside we have our iMac right here. You can see the screen up top. So we're gonna go ahead and take out the iMac itself first. And we'll take a look at the Mac in a moment, but let's take a look at what else is in the box because we do have a little representation of what's included here. So we now have this updated with USB-C connection. So we have a USB-C cord, USB-C connection for our mouse and for our keyboard as well, which are inside of this flap right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull this down right here and then open this up. You might wanna have this laying flat so everything doesn't come falling out, but we're gonna do this for the camera here. So let's make sure, let's hope nothing falls out. Oh, there it comes. Anyways, all the accessories are laid out very nicely inside of the box here. So let's take them out one by one. So first off, we do have our power brick here. So this is what's going to connect to our iMac and it is magnetic and it's also color matching as well. So it is a braided cable that is color matching to the color of your iMac. And then we have the second half of the power supply. So we have the part that plugs into the wall and then of course the little adapter that plugs in to the power brick. And then we have our USB-C magic keyboard right here. So so this is going to be color matching as well. Let's go ahead and take off the paper. You can see the Apple logo on the back. And of course the main attraction is the USB-C port finally on the peripheral. So we have that on our Magic Keyboard and also on the Magic Mouse, which is also included in the box. And once again, this is also color coordinated. So let's go ahead and take off the paper on this one. We also get a braided USB-C to USB-C cable to be able to connect and charge our keyboard and our mouse. And last but not least, we have our Getting Started pamphlet, which does not include Apple stickers. This is the first iMac I've ever unboxed that did not have Apple stickers inside. And then finally, we have the iMac itself. So let's go ahead and take off the sticky pieces on the paper right here. There's just those two spots, and then we should be able to just take it right off. So there we go. Beautiful. This silver is just so sleek and just so Apple. I mean, it's just classic Apple. You can't really go wrong with silver. It's not gonna be as fun of a color, of course, as all the other ones, but I like it. And then if we flip this around to the front, you can see that we have our color matching hello right here, and we do have some protection over top of the screen. So let's go ahead and take that off. So once again, you can see we do have two USB-C ports on the back. These are actually Thunderbolt 4 ports. So both of these are Thunderbolt ports, and and again, I decided to go with the base model. This one is gonna be $12.99. If you do wanna go up to the four Thunderbolt 4 port option, that is an additional $200 at $14.99. But the big benefit with that this year is that all four of those ports are Thunderbolt 4, whereas last year they were not all Thunderbolt 4 ports. And you might have also noticed that with my keyboard, I do not have the Touch ID sensor. You can add that at checkout if you wanna have Touch ID on your keyboard, but that comes standard with the mid range model, the 1499 model, as does the ethernet port, the gigabit ethernet ports inside of the power block. Now also this year, you might also notice a different shade of colors compared to the M3 model. So some of the shades are a little bit lighter and different than previous years. Now also this year, for the first time in the past few years, we are able to choose from all seven color options when you get the base model. So before, with the previous generations, you had to basically go up to the mid-tier model to be able to get some of these special colors 
but this year you can get all seven of the colors with the base model the cheapest iMac which is nice and we're going to power this thing up because I also want to talk about the display and some of the more specifics inside of this iMac so we're going to use this little end right here this is actually magnetic so we're just going to take down here and look for the little hole in the back right here through this section and you can kind of just let it guide you you'll feel the magnetic attachment here so once you put it in there it'll kind of stick and that's when you know you're in the right spot and then you can just kind of push in and it will connect very easily that is your power all right so let's go ahead and press the power button and see our first boot up of the m4 imac we hear that classic apple chime so that is awesome and we do of course have the same iconic chin here for the imac i personally i'm in the, the minority who does not mind the white accents around and the chin at the bottom i just think that makes an imac an iMac. Now the display you're seeing right now is the same display that we saw with the M1 and the M3 iMacs. It is a 24 inch 4.5K retina display. Now what's different about this year is that Apple is for the first time ever on an iMac offering a nano texture display option for an extra $200. Now keep in mind, this is only available if you start out with the mid range model. So if you're starting out at $1499, you have to add on an additional $200 to get that nano texture display. And for me personally, I had no need for a nano texture display on my iMac since it's always stationary and I'm inside and I don't really have any issues with reflections on my screen. But if you're in somewhere or maybe you have a lot of natural light, then maybe you wanna opt for that. But again, you have to spend an extra $200 on top of the $1499 on the mid tier. Now something pretty big that's changed internally on the M4 iMac compared to the M3 iMac is that we now have 16 gigs of RAM base. So this base $1,300 iMac, the cheapest one you can get, has 16 gigs of RAM. That is big. Now we do still have 256 gigs of SSD storage, which is not a ton, but for most people, especially if you use external drives, that will be sufficient enough. I wish Apple would go up to 512 as the base, but maybe in like five years, we'll see that. Anyways, we do have the same eight core CPU and eight core GPU, but at least Apple did also increase the memory bandwidth. So it's 120 gigabytes a second now versus 100 gigabytes a second on M3. But right up here at the top, we have a pretty big change and that is an upgraded FaceTime camera. So this is now the 12 megapixel center stage camera. So 12 megapixel versus the old 1080p terrible quality camera. I'm expecting that to be a good bit better. So we'll get to that. We'll test all that in a moment after we go through this setup. All right, so let's go ahead and run through the setup here. So we're gonna start off with our language. We're gonna select English for that. We're gonna choose our country or region. And then if you have any accessibility needs, you can go ahead and select those right there. I'm just gonna do not now for that. And now we need to connect to our Wi-Fi network. And now we just have a little explainer about the data and privacy on our device. Let's go ahead and tap on continue. And now we have our migration assistant. So if you have any data from a previous iMac or a previous Mac, or even a Windows computer, this is where you can go. You wanna go ahead and select where you want to choose your backup from, or even if you have a time machine backup from your Mac, this is where you go ahead and select that. But for me personally, I am starting fresh, so I'm gonna go down here in the bottom left and go to not now. And now we just need to sign in to our Apple account. And now we need to create a computer account. So you can change your account name and your full name right here, along with your profile picture, and you will need to create a password as well, and potentially a hint if you want to. And now your iCloud data is starting to sync to your Mac. So your messages, your photos, your contacts, all of that is syncing currently to your Mac at this stage. So part of that iCloud process was detecting what settings you had enabled on your previous Mac. And it says that right here, it says here's everything set up as you had it on your other Mac. So we didn't transfer any data, but it detects that from our iCloud account. We had certain settings set up on our previous iMac that it thinks, or not even just iMac, Mac in general, that it thinks we might want to have here and you can customize these if you want in the bottom left, but most of them are probably gonna be what you want. So we're just gonna go to continue. You could always change that later. And now we get the welcome to Mac screen. And let's go ahead and click on continue. And you can see here that yes, this is actually the silver wallpaper. So this is the brand new M4 iMac exclusive wallpaper. So while we're here, let's just go ahead and check our system settings here. First off, I wanna check the version that we're on. So it is Mac OS version 15.0. So it is not up to date out of the box. You will have to do a software update after you unbox your iMac. We're currently on 15.1. It will be 15.2 
pretty soon. Okay, so we just updated to macOS 15.1. So let's go ahead and see if there's anything else to set up. So we now get our analytics right here and we should see something for Apple intelligence as well. So we have our screen time. We're just gonna go ahead and continue on that. And there we go, we do have our Apple intelligence splash screen telling us about the new Apple intelligence features. And now you'll get the option to summarize your notifications and you can see the nice little animation there as well. So you can set this up later if you would like to, but I'm gonna go ahead and summarize all of my notification previews on my Mac. And then of course we do have our light, dark, or auto mode. I will stick to auto and there we go. Now we get the welcome to Mac with the Apple intelligence animation. Okay, so right once you go into the FaceTime app, you will see that we have a splash screen here for center stage. And that is because we now have center stage on the iMac, which means that if we go ahead and click on continue here, take a look at what happens when I go out of frame. So I'm going to move over to the side and the camera will follow me. So if I go up and down, so let's go ahead and stand up. You can see the camera will follow me to a certain distance up and down and side to side. So that is an awesome feature. I'm not sure why that wasn't in the iMac previously, but it's now here with the M4 iMac, but there's more as well. So if you go up here to your top menu bar, you have your FaceTime settings. This is where you can change. You can put portrait mode on to blur out your background more. You could turn on studio light to make your you know, lighting look better in your room. So you do also have an adjustment little uh, dial here so you can make it really intense or not as intense. You can change that there. You also have reactions. We have backgrounds. So you can change your background. So if you want it to be like a green screen, you can do that. And then right below here, we also have something new with this new iMac and that is desk view. So now if you press on desk view, it's going to give you a new section here that says while screen sharing, show both a top down view of your desk and your face at the same time. So if we click on continue, take a look at this. So it says to tilt your iMac screen all the way forward, then use the plus and minus controls to align your desk to the edge of the box. So we're gonna make this section a little bit smaller. So we're gonna zoom in towards the plus to make the area a little bit smaller so it covers just my desk here and nothing else. And then we're going to start desk view and take a look at that. So if I'm doing a demo or something like that, obviously the quality is not great here because I'm so zoomed in. But if you were zoomed out a little bit, the quality would be much better. And you can basically give a good kind of tutorial if you're on the phone with somebody, like on a FaceTime call with somebody or giving a presentation, you can do that right here. And if you wanna go out of that, of course, you can just go ahead out of this by just clicking on the X right here. So the webcam quality is going to be better than previous iMacs, but the speakers sound the same to me. So I did do a little test of the speakers and we have the same setup. So I wasn't really expecting much, but we do have the same high fidelity six speaker system with force canceling woofers and also support for spatial audio. So speakers sound tremendous on this iMac, but if you had an M3 or even an M1, it's very similar in terms of sound, if not the exact same. And one little detail that a lot of people miss on on the iMac is the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And that's because it's hidden on the left frame of the iMac. So this little headphone jack is powerful because it does have support for high impedance headphones. So that is great to know if you use wired headphones like I personally do when I edit my videos. So that is good to have. And as far as the microphones go, we do have the same studio quality three mic array with high signal to noise ratio and direction beam forming. So that's exactly the same spec that we saw on the M3 iMac. Okay, so we just finished up with our testing. Let's take a look at our scores here. So I did run a Cinebench R23 test here to test out the CPU and the GPU. So you can see that we scored a 9884 on the multi-core for the CPU. And then as far as the single core goes, we scored a 2161, which gave us a 4.57 MP ratio. Next up was the Blackmagic disk speed test to see how fast our read and write speed speeds are and we scored a 2016 megabytes a second for write and then for the read speeds we got around 2838 megabytes per second. And as far as the Geekbench 6 test results, we did score a 3638 on the single core and a 13636 on the multi-core when it comes to the CPU. And for the GPU, we scored a 30,888. And then of course we had to do a Final Cut Pro video export test. So this is the same file that I use for my M4 versus M4 Pro Mac mini video. So this is a 4K 60 FPS video. It's about 96 gigabytes after it's fully 
successfully exported out and we finished this export in seven minutes and 37 seconds which is actually not bad given the fact that this is a base model iMac but it still was a little bit slower than the base model Mac mini the M4 Mac mini but nonetheless being able to export that video in under 10 minutes on a base iMac is pretty nice now I did also want to touch on the thermals as well and surprisingly this thing is not very hot at all like I've been feeling the back of this throughout these tests and it did not get very warm whatsoever even during the intensive you know Cinebench tests the fan did kick on when I was doing the video export test but surprisingly during the benchmarks I did not hear the fan at all so I think we're starting to see across the board how 16 gigabytes of RAM is really a big deal when it comes to the base model machines. They're more capable now, I feel like, than ever before, not only because of the more powerful M4 chip, but again, also double the RAM that we used to be able to get from a base model. And if you're wondering if you should upgrade from a previous iMac, maybe an M1 or an M3, I would say that if you have an M3 iMac, you probably don't need to upgrade. I mean, really, it's only if you want to, if you have the extra money to upgrade, and you just need to have the latest and greatest then sure go ahead and do it especially if you have a four port and you want to have access to four thunderbolt ports on the back instead of just two like it was on the m3 then it might be a good idea to go with the m4 and of course if you want nano texture this is the first year they're offering that so of course you might want to go ahead and upgrade for that reason but if you're coming from the m1 imac i think it is probably going to be worth the upgrade for a lot of people especially if you're somebody who does do creative work and you need that extra ram and of course if you want a you know more powerful neural engine for the Apple intelligence features, then it's gonna make sense to upgrade to M4. I don't think it's a must, but I think it will be a nice upgrade from M1. And of course, it's only been about 48 hours that I've had with this M4 iMac, so my opinions could change, and I will be bringing you guys a more in-depth review after I've been using this machine for a longer period of time. So if you wanna see that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys very soon.